And definitely this connects to Jesus' prophecies and Illuminati. I'm going to let you know how. Um, if you've never heard of this guy before, he's a man by the name of Frederick Engel, or Frederick Engel rather. And what he was was a great expositor of communist ideologies. And he developed something called the Engel Dialectic. Now what the Engel Dialectic is, is that if a government wants to see radical changes in the society that they govern, they're going to have to see a catastrophic event take place in that society over which they govern, and then supply a solution for that catastrophic event which will bring about the desired changes that they want to see. Or, this same government is they themselves going to have to invent a catastrophic event. In other words, they're going to have to create a big, huge problem and then supply a solution for the problem that they created, which will bring about the desired changes they want to see in the society over which they govern. And that's exactly what happened on 9-11. 9-11 was just a planned tragedy by the United States government to bring about the radical changes that they want to see in the United States and eminently throughout the whole world. The Twin Towers falling was a great domino starting a rippling effect which will result in the stripping us of all of our constitutional rights and, and consequently bringing in of the New World Order. That's what we're seeing right now. You saw that when the U.S. Patriot Act came in that our U.S. constitutional rights began being taken away from us one by one and we're going to continue to see that. But let's go a little bit forward with this. How does Illuminati connect with Jesus' prophecies and all what took place? Well. The Illuminati is connected with Freemasonry. We know that. And Illuminati and Freemasonry have their basis in sun worship. Now, many of the lowers don't know this, but the higher-ups in all these organizations are fully aware that they're engaged in the worship of Satan, which is circled around the worship of the sun. Now, all of the teachings in Illuminism and Masonry come from Egyptian mythology or Egyptian cult worship. That's where you get the pyramid on the back of your dollar bill that you see on the screen right now. That's where you get that from and the all-seeing eye of Horus on the top. It's all about sun worship. But Egyptian occult worship really gets all their teachings from ancient Babylon, from the Babylonian mysteries. Egypt had Osiris, Isis and Horus, but they got that really from Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz, which was uh, the, the three major fake pagan deities of Babylonian mystery occult worship. All of this once again circled around the sun. But once again, around this whole sun worship was built astrology. Astrology is huge in Egyptian cult worship because astrology was huge in Babylonian occult worship. And Egyptians got this once again from the Babylonians. Let me share this with you from a book I have here. It's called The Religions of Ancient Egypt and Babylonia. And on page 236, it tells you exactly what I just said. It says, all over the world, the more prominent stars and constellations have received, name, have received names. But it is only the more prominent and brilliant among them of which this is true. So far as we know, the only people who have ever systematically mapped out the heavens, dividing the stars into groups and giving to each group a name of its own, were the Babylonians. And it was from the Babylonians that the constellations, as known to Greeks and Romans, to Hindus and Chinese, which by the way, big in astrology once again, were ultimately derived. The inference, therefore, is near at hand that the primitive Egyptians also were indebted for their map of the sky to the same source. In short, Egypt stole astrology from Babylonia. Now, how does this all connect to the Twin Towers falling and the Illuminati and everything else? Well, once again, let me start from the top. Illuminati, Masonry have their basis in sun worship. Now, remember, President George Bush is a part of the Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones is a sect of Freemasonry. This means that... At the bottom of Skull and Bones is also, or that the foundation of Skull and Bones is also sun worship. And that means astrology is connected to Skull and Bones, like it's connected to Freemasonry, like it's connected to Illuminism. Why is astrology so important to this? On your screen right now, you'll see an astrological chart. Now, on this astrological chart, you'll see six columns going across and six columns going down, horizontally and vertically. In each column, you'll see six squares. If you add up all the numbers in one of these columns, you'll get 111. But if you take the number 6, which is the number of squares that are contained in each column, and multiply that by 111, you'll get the number 666. That's right, the infamous 666. I'm sure you're beginning to see how this connects to Bible prophecy. In the book of Revelations, chapter 13 and verse 18, the Bible says, 
Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Once again, six, six, six. What we saw happen on 9-11 was, was, was a huge part of bringing about the new world order, but it's also to usher in the worship of the beast, because we are told in the book of Revelations, chapter 13 and verse 16, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save they have the mark of the beast, the name of the beast, or the number of his name, 666. So if you don't get down with the whole New World Order system, you won't be able to buy or sell. Your freedom of conscience will be stripped from you. This whole thing is about enforcing worship. And this worship is warned against in the book of Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9 which says, And the third angel followed, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into his cup of indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. So what you want to do is escape the false worship of the New World Order, which is circled around sun worship, which really has to do with Sunday. We'll talk about that another time. And the only way you can do this is you have to worship the true and living God, the Creator, which we're told about in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6, which says, And another angel followed, saying with a loud voice, and he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him who created, and worship Him who created heavens and earth, the sea and fountains and waters. I didn't say that right, but let me say it again. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God, give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And that God is the God of the Sabbath, which is spoken about in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8, which says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Worship the Creator, escape the New World Order, don't receive 666. We'll talk about that more later. If anybody else has questions, ask us. And whether you like it or not, the truth is the truth.